but she claimed before that adoption could be filed. Don't let anyone pressure you into giving them your child. We have a lot of expectant mothers and parents out here who are telling their stories about being pressured into adoption and putting their children in foster care. So story time. I went to school with a girl named Kaylee. At 17, she was essayed by her cousin. Later, she found out she was pregnant. Her family did not support abortion, and she was 17 years old. Kaylee's mother started telling her that she could not keep this baby, and if she did keep the baby, they would be kicking her out. So she would have to give her baby up if she wanted to stay at home. They would cut her off completely and disown her. This is when the manipulation started. When she's four months pregnant, her aunt takes her out to eat one night. Her aunt says, I'm going to do you a big favor and help you out. I'll take the baby when you have it, and you'll still get visitations when you want. So when she dropped Kaylee off, Kaylee told her mother. Her mother said, I know we've been talking about it. When she's done giving birth, her aunt comes in the hospital room. She says, here, sign this paper. Here's the stipulations to our agreement. I name him. He goes home with me. I make the rules. I'll give you visitation anytime you want, and I'll send you pictures. But remember, I'm his parent. Kaylee agreed, and she said, I have one stipulation. I don't want that predator, my cousin, anywhere around her. Her aunt agreed, and they signed the promissory note. Kaylee's mother and aunt suggested that she did not hold the baby. Why wouldn't they want her to hold the baby when she's going to be getting visitation? So the aunt stays in the hospital room with Kaylee. Her aunt feeds and changes the baby. The last day in the hospital, Kaylee's aunt takes the baby and leaves. She doesn't even offer Kaylee a ride home. Kaylee had to call her mom and beg her to come pick her up. Her mother shamed her the whole way home. This is a very religious family. They always blame the women. As soon as she got home, she texted her aunt. When can I see the baby? Her aunt said, well, you know, this is too soon. I want to give us a few days to get settled in before you see the baby. But I'll send you pictures in the meantime. She sent one picture. After three weeks of begging her aunt to see her baby, Kaylee sees her aunt in Walmart with the baby. Her aunt turns the buggy and goes the other way. Kaylee runs up behind her and says, what's wrong? What did I do? Her aunt said, it's just too soon. When Kaylee gets back home, she gets on Facebook. Her aunt has her blocked. She can't see the baby pictures. Her mother tells her to leave it alone and be thankful that someone took her of a child. Now, they had manipulated and shamed this girl so much. One day, Kaylee uses her mother's laptop and gets on Facebook, and she can see her aunt's pictures from her mom's page. And she sees pictures of the predator who attacked her holding the baby girl. She texts her aunt, you won't let me see the baby, but you let my attacker hold my baby? Her aunt says, don't contact me anymore. You don't have any rights. Remember, she's 17. People in her 20s don't even know their rights when it comes to this stuff. Kaylee would be pushed out of that baby's life. She graduates high school. Three months goes by. She's now 18. She got a summer job. Kaylee told one of her co-workers about this situation. Her friend said, they can't steal your baby from you. Did y'all go to court? Kaylee said, no. I just signed a promissory note in the hospital. Her friend said, that's not a custody hearing. That's still your child. Part two coming. Don't let anyone pressure you into giving them your child. Adoption story part two. So her co-worker says, if all you did was sign a piece of notebook paper and y'all haven't been to court, then you have the right to see your child if you want to. Kaylee just started crying. Kaylee said, I never wanted to give her up to begin with. Co-worker said, why did you let your aunt take the baby? I just graduated high school. I just got a summer job. I got a vehicle, but it's in my parents' name, too. Everything I have is owned by my parents, so I wouldn't have a way to take care of the baby. Her co-worker said your family wouldn't help you. Kaylee said, no, it's a sin. I'm a burden. I embarrassed and made my family look bad by having a baby underage and out of wedlock. Her co-worker grabbed her hand and said, do you understand you were essayed? You were attacked. That's not your fault. Don't let anyone, including your family, blame you. She said, did they pressure you to give your aunt your baby? Kaylee said, yeah, it was either a family member or she would go into foster care. And my mom said if she went into foster care, I would never see her again. So at least with my aunt, I would get visitations. But they haven't allowed any since she was born. Her co-worker said, do you want to see your baby? Kaylee said, of course. I've been trying since we left the hospital, but my aunt has cut off all contact with me. Her co-worker said, honey, she can't do that. Kaylee said, I know, but if I fight it, my family will throw me out and that I won't have a way to take care of the baby. Then she found out that Kaylee's mother had been taking her paychecks. So they're not even allowing Kaylee to save money up to get on her feet. Co-worker said, look, my aunt works at CPS. If you want help, just let me know. When Kaylee got home, she asked her mother to take her to see the baby. Her mother said, no, she's not your baby. And if your aunt doesn't want to let us see the baby, then that's her choice. She's that baby's parent, not you. Kaylee said, well, I'm going to see her. And her mama jumps up 
If you even try to see that baby, I'll throw all your stuff out in the yard. You don't have nobody but me. And you'll be sleeping in the alleyway because I'll take that car and phone from you. Kaylee said, I just want to be in her life. Her mom said, that baby don't know you. Your aunt is her mother. She would never love you once she finds out how she was conceived. Kaylee said, that wasn't my fault. Her mother said, I don't want to hear any more about this. It's embarrassing enough. Her mom took her car keys. The next morning, she dropped Kaylee off at work. She asked her co-worker to please take her to DSS. The DSS worker was shocked. She couldn't believe a Christian family would treat their own child this way. She sent Kaylee to a shelter. They got her some baby stuff, another copy of her driver's license. They went to the courthouse and got everything they needed. Now all she needed was a stable home. Her co-worker's family offered to let her and the baby stay with them. This family had helped her so much. It took them a few days to get everything they needed for the baby. Now all she had to do was go get the baby. They didn't want to tell her mom before they got the baby because they were scared her mom would alert the aunt and the aunt might try to run with the baby. When they got to her aunt's house, her mother's car was in the driveway. Her mother had been going behind her back to her aunt's house this entire time. Her aunt came to the door. Kaylee seen her mother standing in the kitchen holding her baby. Her aunt lied and claimed that she had legally adopted this baby. CPS knew that was a lie. Kaylee's mom said, I will disown you if you take this baby. Kaylee started crying. Part 3 coming. Traumatic adoption. Sorry this takes so long, but we only get three minutes. She's standing in her aunt's doorway, and her mother's screaming at her, If you take this child, you can pack your stuff and get out. Her mom is yelling so loud that the cops have to tell her to calm down. The CPS worker says, Hand me the baby. Kaylee's mom says, If you take this baby, you are never welcome back to my house again. The entire family wants nothing to do with you. And then her aunt chimes in, Yeah, Kaylee, if you take this baby, we're all done with you. The CPS worker said, Ma'am, just give me the baby. Now, Kaylee's co-worker had came there for moral support. Her co-worker said, ma'am, that's fine. Her and the baby can stay with my family. We've got plenty of room at our house. The sheriff deputy said, I'm not going to ask you again. Hand over the child. So her mother handed the baby to the CPS worker. Her mother went to scream, and I'm done with you. We're all done with you. Kaylee said, mom, that's fine. You've always treated me bad. I won't treat my daughter the way you have treated me. She won't be scared of me the way I am you. I'm not going to hurt her like you did me. And I'm not going to control her the way you've controlled me. Now that was a big move for Kaylee. She had never stood up to her mother before. She'd never raised her voice around her mother. So Kaylee, the DSS worker, her friend, all took the baby to the DSS worker's white van. Before the CPS worker put the baby in the car seat, she said, Kaylee, would you like to hold your baby? And Kaylee just burst out in tears. She'd never been allowed to hold her baby. Not even at the hospital. And while she was holding her baby, her aunt runs up to the van. She said, I want you to know I'm going to the courthouse right now to file a lawsuit against you. I want to be reimbursed for everything I've spent on this child. The sheriff deputy made her back up. He said, you do whatever you got to do, but you're not getting any closer to her. And she did try to file a suit, but it was dismissed by a judge. She did go to small claims court, but the judge dismissed the case because Kaylee was a minor when her aunt had taken the baby. And he actually criticized her aunt for allowing the predator father to be around this child especially when she knew he was a registered S.O. And he criticized her mother for allowing him to be around Kaylee. And her family knew he was an S.O. They put the baby in the van and went back to DSS. The DSS worker sat Kaylee down and she explained to her what she needed to do to keep her child and how she could not get into any trouble. Like, don't give them any reason to try to file for custody or report to CPS. They went back to the co-worker's house and got Kaylee and her baby settled in. She says it was hard at first. Nobody had ever taught her how to be a good mother. So her co-worker's family helped her out a lot, waking up for nightly feedings, changing diapers, showing her how to pick out new car seats, high chairs. The co-worker's mother took her to her parenting classes where Kaylee learned how to breastfeed. You know, you have to understand, this is a lot for someone to go through. But she's done well. Kaylee now has her own house, vehicles, her own business. Her daughter is five now. She started school. Kaylee is married. But the whole point of this story is to show how people are pressured into adoption by their own families, spouses, friends, churches, and that's not right. And it's usually the friends that want to help take care of the baby that end up trying to take your baby. I got more of these coming, y'all. Thank you for watching. Thank you all so much for 260,000 followers. Sharing awareness. Traumatic adoption story.